Don't miss out on new videos. Click the bell. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up for more. Hi everybody and welcome back to English Topics. My name is Alicia and I'm joined again by... Hi, I'm Davey. Welcome back. And today we're going to be talking about ways to remember 10 times more vocabulary. So these are going to be some methods that we think are helpful in remembering vocabulary and studying vocabulary and applying your new vocabulary. So let's get started. All right, Start my first method here is to keep a diary and use the new words that you are studying. Um, so this tip, and actually my other tips as well, all have a similar kind of strategy, which is you have to build new vocabulary into your existing framework of vocabulary. So learning a language is difficult, uh, and you need a certain amount of words to be able to start using the language. But once you start to build a really solid foundation, it's easier to build more words on top of it. And so doing something like keeping a diary will help you um, build those new words into the, the structure, the existing uh, vocabulary, a set of words that you already have. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to use it, and you have to use it with words that you know. And keeping a diary and using those new words is a good way, um, because it keeps you in a habit, and it's meaningful for you. You know, you write about, write about your day, write about your life. Um, so that way those words have meaning for you. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. I had the same, uh, the same tip essentially, which was to use the words you're studying to create. Mm. And I had uh, speech or text, either one. Create something with the words that you're learning. So a diary is a great example of how to do that. Make sure you're not just studying the words, but you're actually creating something new using those words that you've put in your head. If it's only input and never output, there's going to be a block there, I think. Yes. I've, I've experienced that, Absolutely. where it's only input for words that I'm trying to learn or expressions I'm trying to learn. And until I learn to create with those new words, with those new expressions, it doesn't stick. I can't actually use it until I'm, I'm comfortable using it. Like it takes, it takes a long time in my case. Yes. yes. So absolutely. So creating, making a diary, whatever it is for you. A blog could be another thing, like sure. a second language blog. I don't know, a Twitter feed, maybe an Instagram account. Social media is a great way to do that That's these true. days. That's yeah. very true. Lots of people do that. Lots of people actually follow. Uh, or lots of people um, who follow this channel mm -hmm. also have um, like uh, like Twitter feeds or Instagram feeds that they they have devoted to their English studies. I've mm -hmm. noticed that. So like I'll, like people will follow me and I'll see like oh they're studying English and they specifically only tweet in English, mm -hmm. um, which is really cool. So they just as you're saying they use that as a way to keep like an easy diary of their day right. in their yeah, language. You can, you can tweet at people or tweet using those new words. Mm -hmm. You can also search. You could do a Twitter search for words that you're using and see how other people use them. Mm -hmm. And that will help you like, learn the context of those words as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a lot that you can do, especially, yeah, with these new tools as well. Mm -hmm. Social media is a great tool. Nice, all right, we had the same one for one-ish. All right. Okay, my next tip is to devote 30 minutes a day to vocabulary. So again, this is just a rough number, um, but I've noticed that when I'm studying vocabulary, if I just devote, in my case, I would devote 15 minutes in the morning and 15 minutes in the evening just to studying vocabulary. Um, and my vocabulary would improve steadily, slowly, but steadily. Um, and then when I don't do this, in times when I get busy or I stop studying in the morning and in the evening, I notice I just plateau, I flatten out. So if you take like 30 minutes a day, morning and evening, I find is best, in my case, is best for me, to study vocabulary, review the vocabulary that you had studied the previous day, for example. Um, that can be extremely helpful. One, to remember the words that you studied, you know, in the week prior or whatever. Um, and two, just to make sure that you continue to pick up new words. So even if you're not doing anything work-related, um, like that allows you to use English or to use your target language, um, you're still able to, through your studies, pick up new vocabulary words that you might encounter in the future. So this is something um, that I have found, and I'm guilty of not always following this rule, but this is something I have found that really does work um, well. And there are a lot of tools to do this too. So like flashcards and like vocabulary word banks, whatever is useful for you. Right. Yep. Yeah. Do you study vocabulary? I do. I study a lot of vocabulary. And I completely agree with you. It's something you have to have built into your routine. And as you said, you, you do this in the morning or in the evening. It's good to know that about yourself, what time of the day is good for you 
to study that kind of thing so that you'll help retain it. For me, it's morning as well and afternoons actually.、Mm -hmm. In the evenings, I'm a little fuzzy maybe, but.、Mm -hmm. Um, yes, I, I try and study a lot of vocabulary,、mm -hmm. but it doesn't always stick. I don't always use it. I have to use it for it to stick. Yep, I agree. I agree. Okay, nice. What's your next tip?、Uh, my next one again is similar to the tip that I said before. All my tips have to do with kind of building that that net or that scaffolding, and it's to use a thesaurus.、Um, so this would be if you're doing something like writing a diary or using Twitter or just what you want to study. The meanings of words and get a sense for the nuance or the different shades of meaning between words that have a very similar meaning.、Uh, use something like a, a, a thesaurus because if you learn, if you can learn five or ten different words that mean sad or happy,、uh, those words will start to stick together in your mind. You'll associate those words with each other,、uh, and that makes them easier to recall. Because again, you're you're building a framework, you're building a net of different word meanings in your mind. The more vocabulary that you have built, so I think using a thesaurus when you're writing can be really helpful for understanding not only the differences in meaning, but helping those related words to stick in、mm. your mind. Right, and I think that that's a tip that if you can apply that effectively and learn, like in your example, many different words. That have similar meanings, like about like words sad or like words that mean happy, for example. If you can do that, it's going to make your writing and your speaking much deeper、mm -hmm. in meaning. You're、yes. going to sound much more fluent if you can use deeper vocabulary words. If you always rely on the same vocabulary words, it's going to limit you a lot in your reading and in your speaking. Yes. So if you can use a thesaurus effectively to understand a series of words that have similar or associated meanings, it's going to open up a lot of opportunities. Opportunities for you, totally great one. Okay, thank you. Nice ones. What do you have next? My next tip is、uh, this is something that I use actually.、Uh, it is reading things in your target language related to your work and your hobbies.、Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I struggled with it, when I was studying, when I do study, <laughs> one of the things that's difficult for me is that I have trouble. I have trouble identifying or maybe. Um, understanding how I'm going to use the things in the textbook in my life, like how often do I need to call my pen pal or my I don't know my exchange partner or whatever. I know I need to、um, maybe study English <laughs> or <Right. laughs> for this job, sure.、Um, but if I read about my hobbies. In my target language, if I'm studying English and I want to read about my hobbies in English, I'm much more interested in that topic, and I'm going to learn the vocabulary words a lot more quickly. So, for example, in my case,、uh, what I found really useful, going back to the SNS example, is I、uh, I was interested in music, or I am interested in music, and so I would pay attention to like my favorite musicians. What are the kinds of words that they're writing? What are the sort of phrases that they use? How do I use those same words and phrases to talk about the things that they're talking about? So, because I was using people that I was interested in as my base for my understanding, I was able to pick up those words, the specific words that I needed for my hobbies in my life, much more quickly. Like it would have been difficult for me to go to my teacher and say, "Hey, how does a like?" How does a musician explain this feeling, or what what's the best word I could use to describe this or that aspect of performance? It was something very specific to my interests, and so by going directly to the people who were using those words and expressions, I could find them immediately. Over time, it took a little bit of time to get used to the way they spoke or the way that they wrote on the internet, but I could pick up things that I wanted to know and words that the people around them were also using. So this was something.、Um, That I found very, very useful, and I continue to find useful. So things that are specific to you, specific to your life, and the things that you need to do and that you want to accomplish in terms、mm -hmm. of your language goals. Right,、uh, and at least with regard to hobbies, maybe not work as much, but、uh, well, could be. But especially with hobbies, you'll be more motivated to read about that in English or in your target language because. But that's something that you'd read in your your first language anyway, and so to be motivated to read that、um, will help you、mm -hmm. because if you're interested in it, you're motivated to do it. You'll read more, you'll get more language,、mm -hmm. and then you'll get language that you'll use in that situation. You know, for example, if you're a, a skier, you know, if you love to go skiing and you read skiing magazines in English, 
And then when you go skiing, you're in a situation where you can use those words.、Mm. Um, so I think I think that's a really good tip,、mm-hmm. basing vocabulary around your hobby or your、mm-hmm. or your work. Right, right. Nice. Okay. What's your next one?、Uh, my next one is similar to the last one, but maybe a little bit different take on it. And it's word association. And of course, using something like a thesaurus helps you make word associations. But what I meant with this tip is to do exercises to help you with word association. So you know, drawing like bubble maps, idea maps. Uh, linking up vocabulary words with similar words,、uh, playing a word association game with a study partner.、Um, you know,、uh, just if if I say a word and then you know your partner gives a word back to you that makes them it makes them think of another word, and that's a nice way just to to drill vocabulary, but also as I was saying before, to build association between words. Uh, which which helps those those words stick in your mind. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So different word association games, I should say. I see. Okay, so maybe we can try one. So when you said you said you would say a word, and then the the partner playing the game would just respond with a, a word that they associate with the、mm-hmm. first word. Sure. You could set rules on it. You could say similar meaning、mm-hmm. or、uh, opposite meanings. You know, you could do antonyms or synonyms、mm-hmm. or. Right.、Whatever、oh, there's、like、another、that. game that I remember I used to play when I was a kid, which was going through the alphabet. My family and I、oh, used to play this on road trips. We had to think of、um, words that began with each letter of the alphabet. So, for example, it would be like an animal. So we had to think of an a- an animal that started with an A, like anteater, and then you'd go to B.、Mm-hmm. But you had to say A first before you could move to B. So anteater. Buffalo, and yeah, then anteater, buffalo, cat, and go through each letter of the alphabet with that category. Of course, Q and X always got a little bit、uh, difficult. But that, that's a nice idea, though, too, because that's a memory game, and remembering vocabulary requires a strong memory. So、mm-hmm. that's that's a nice way to kind of build those skills together.、Mm-hmm. So there are a lot of things I think you can do mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, to improve your word association for sure. But of course, these aren't the only ways to remember vocabulary, but perhaps. Some things, at least, that have helped us, and that are maybe easy for people to do. Anybody can do these. Everybody, I think, watching this video will have access to the tools they need to do these sorts of things. So, please feel free to give them a try if you have not already. So, thanks very much for watching this episode of English Topics. If you like the video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, check us out at EnglishClass101.com. You can find some tools that are similar to some of the tools we talked about in this episode. So please take a look at those. You can sign up in just a few minutes.、Um, thanks very much for watching this episode of English Topics, and we will see you again soon. Bye bye. Yeah. Sit back down. I have to do the subscribe message one. Thank you. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Cool. I'm very sorry for shouting at you.